Okay, so we've done a little bit about, about this in class already, but today we'll be talking about potentials and using them in thermochemical cycles to find out more chemistry information about a reaction. Uh, so what I mean by a thermochemical cycle is that if we have, let's say, some reactants, this is kind of more generic, A goes to B, but let's say A also goes to D, and then D goes to C. So these are just some uh, different reagents, who knows. Um, so the part about a thermochemical cycle is that these reactions are all related, but if, suppose we want to go from compound A to compound C, uh, we could go different pathways, right? So we could go A to B to C, we could go A to D to C. And so in principle, these, you might think that they're different energies, but the key point is delta G is a state function. Free energy is state function. So what that means is that if we assign, let's say this is delta G1, delta G2, delta G3, delta G4, uh, no matter what pathway we take to get from A to C, the total free energy change has to be the same. So you can imagine also, if we're drawing some reaction coordinate diagram, here's A, here's C, this is energy, it's the reaction coordinate. So whether we go through this pathway, or whether we go through this pathway, or whether we go through you know, like a double hump situation, so no matter what, these two energies are going to be the same. So what this means is that if we then add it up, so let's say this first pathway would go through reactant B, so we're taking the pathway of going delta G1 plus delta G2, and so that's the total free energy change from going from A to C, but this has to be the same as going from A to D to C, so this has got, got to be equal to delta G3 plus delta G4. So that's kind of our takeaway. So your free energy has to be the same no matter what way. So pathway independent. Okay. Um, and then another thing I want to point out is, watch out, directionality matters. So if, suppose I'm going, okay, so if A can go to B, and A goes to C, and B also goes to C, so let's call this delta G1, delta G2, and delta G3. So here, the arrows are which direction delta, our delta G kind of refers to. So A going to C is delta G2, B going to C is delta G3. So what this means is that when we do our sum, so our pathway, if we want to find out the energy going A to B, it's delta G1, but we could also do it stepwise. So going through C and then going back to B. But in this case, because we're now going backwards, we must then take a negative. So what we're saying is delta G1 equals going downwards, so forward is positive, so delta G2. And then the key part is because we're going backwards, it's minus delta G3. So again, conserve your direction and be aware of that. So I like drawing these square, square schemes, or like it's not square, triangle schemes, but I like drawing them as kind of schematically. But some people prefer, ooh, and I dropped everything, okay. Some people prefer to do it kind of more equation-wise. I'll give an example of that later. But you can write out each of these equations as separate, like A to B, and then have the delta G on the right side. And then you can do a system of equations and cancel out your reactants. But I'll show that later. Okay. So here's an example of how we can use thermochemical cycle to think about chemistry if we have some potentials that we have. So here's one thing. Okay. We know that here's aqueous iron 3. And then if you reduce it, so I'm going to put an electron plus electron, this goes to aqueous iron 2, your ferrous ion. Okay, and then this has some potential I'll put on top here. So E naught equals plus 0.77 volts. So this is the standard reduction potential of 
iron 3 plus. So this is a half reaction, not a balanced electrochemical equation. OK. And then so the question that I want to know is, if I have these two species, iron 3 plus and iron 2 plus, which binds more strongly to cyanide? So um, if I give you the facts that, let's say, we also know the electrochemical reduction, the standard reduction potential of the ferrous cyanide ion, FeCn6 3 minus. So this is iron 3. If you also reduce this, this goes to iron 2. This is iron 2. And then here, we can measure this electrochemical potential. So here is E naught equals plus 0.44 volts. So this doesn't tell us anything immediately. But what we do know is that we have, we could complete the cycle. So if we want to figure out binding of cyanide to iron 3 plus, we could potentially just go down here. It is, I guess, in equilibrium. So I'll draw a double hair to arrow. But going downward, so again, just rather than to compute cycle, we're just going to go downwards. Keep in mind, everything's reversible. So Binding cyanide, we're adding cyanide, so 6CN minus. So this is not a redox reaction, right? We're staying iron 3. And then binding cyanide here, again, not a redox reaction. We're staying iron 2 to iron 2. So these are the two, basically, we want to compare our equilibrium constants. So that's the question here, right? We want to say our equilibrium constant of iron 3 plus plus 6 cyanide to FeCn6 3 minus, so KEQ. So I'll call this the equilibrium constant of the oxidized species. And then if we will have also aqueous iron 2 plus 6 Cn minus. So this is K red, right? So when I say which one binds C and minus better, I'm asking which one's bigger, the equilibrium constant of K ox or the equilibrium constant of K red. So like the equilibrium constant of cyanide binding to the reduced iron. So, so th these are basically our two equations going downwards because we're relating two potentials that we know for known reactions. And then so uh, what we can say is that if we want to relate everything by delta G, which I'll do in pink, so here, this delta G1, and let's call this delta G2, this will be delta G3, and this will be delta G4. So what we want to know is here is Kox. So delta G2 is going to be equal to negative RT log Kox, and delta G3 equals negative RT log K red. And of course, our delta G1 is going to be equal to I'll call this potential one, potential two, or I guess a potential, what, potential four, just to keep things straightforward. Negative N, F, E not one. Right, so now we have a thermochemical cycle, right? We have delta G's between all four of our species here. So we have four things. And we've, let, we've related them all by free energy. So for the two that are going across, these are redox reactions, so half reactions. And the two going down, there are binding equilibria. So as a result, what we can now do is we could say that we could, you know, based on our pathway dependence, we could say, for example, that delta G1, so going this way, and then down, plus delta G2, must equal, oh sorry, this is delta G3, delta G3, so then going downwards here, equals delta G2 plus delta G4, because right? we're going from uh, this top left to the bottom right. So again, free energy is a state function, so we can take either pathway to get to the same product, and therefore these free energies must be equal. Okay, 
So now we can just plug it in. So, okay, so n equals 1 for both of these half reactions, so we'll just kind of ignore it. So delta G1 is going to be uh, negative F, I'll just put E not 1 for now, delta G3 equals minus RT natural log K red, and this equals delta G2, which is negative RT natural log K ox, going across delta G4, minus, again, N equals 1, F standard exponential of this half reaction. So the cyanide reduction versus E1 is the aqua ion reduction. Okay, great. So if we re rearrange our terms, what we get out is, let's see, so negative F E not 1 minus E not 4 equals negative RT log K ox over K reduction. Here I've just combined logs, so if you subtract logs, then you can put them in the same uh, log thing by dividing. Okay, so let's see. Let's cancel out our negatives. And then, so therefore, uh, we'll move F to the other side. E not 1 minus E not 4 equals RT over F log K ox over K reduced. And then, so E not 1 minus E not 4 is going to be 0.77 volts minus 0.44 volts, so 0.33 volts equals RT over F log K ox over K reduced. And then as a result, okay, so I, <laughs> without doing the math, uh, I believe the number that I got out was K ox over K reduced equals 375,000. So what that means is that cyanide binds much, much better to iron 3 plus than it does to iron 2 plus. So what we showed is that by figuring out a chemical cycle, um, you can learn something about the chemistry that's going on in addition to uh, redox reaction. So there's binding equilibrium, et cetera, et cetera. Um, people always kind of ask, well, how do I know what the thermochemical cycle is? And like I was saying, it doesn't matter as long as it matches up as a thermochemical cycle. Because remember, delta G is pathway independence. You just need to figure out a way to make it work. Because well, I would take a step back, figure out what you're asking, what answer you're looking for, and then write out the relevant equations, and then see whether you can relate them through other information that you know when you're building up your question.